Hi, Rory. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's just skip to the, the meaty stuff and then we'll sort of get into the, the dialogue around it. But tell me, I mean, you come from a creative and a digital background, right? Mostly, yeah. And, you, and your remit is global. So um, tell me what you're doing that you think works. And I would love to hear your opinions on, you know, sometimes in other markets, like some of the stuff you sort of, we talked about briefly before we got here. Yeah. It sounds like some brands in other markets are, especially markets that are slightly perhaps more homogenized, they're willing to take bigger risks. And I'm curious to hear how that's paying dividends or not for brands in other places. Yeah, so just to, to uh, recap, so yeah, my background, I guess, I spent like 15, 16 years in digital creative. And then two years ago, I joined Havas Media. And I think it's interesting because I think a lot of media agencies now are bringing kind of people from all different areas and perspectives. I didn't have a media background, but there's a recognition that media is media and creative. I think we're going back to that intersection where they were together in the Mad Men era, they split apart, and now they're coming back together again. So, um, and I joined Havas Digital, and then we kind of merged Havas Digital with Havas Media. So we don't even have really a, a digital separate group anymore. And so my role went from head of digital strategy, just head of strategy. So I actually, I embrace it a lot. I think that's the future of where agencies, everyone's moving. Someday I pray that we will not have to use digital in a title anymore because it's, it's everywhere. I think it's about your role. So I do strategy and strategy, whether it's for, you know, TV or mobile or video, um, certain elements are, are very consistent. Um, it's kind of what um, Sarah was saying before, it's consumer insights, it's brand stories, so. So, so I mean, what's, so Pete, Pete used the word engagement, which is you know, really interesting. We talk about sort of storytelling and how that works. Like, what is, what is success and what, you know, what are sort of things that you would hang your hat on as success uh, from some of the campaigns you've de delivered in other countries specifically? Um, well, you know, to go back to the question you were asking as well before about success and awareness versus engagement, I would really, I don't think we have a single client now who comes in and talks to us and says, yes, I'm very happy, like, if you just get awareness. I think you, you know, five, ten years ago, you could have had that conversation and the only metrics or the primary metrics were awareness. I'm not saying that that, that doesn't exist, but um, now it's not, you, you can't with everybody, you know, multi-screen and tweeting and you can't just have awareness. There has to be some measure of response or, so we've immediately pushed the, whatever, the old funnel. We've, we've jumped immediately. We don't even start now with awareness. We just start with discover and prefer because that, that upfront step is so short, whereas before it would take forever. So my idea of, I guess, what would be successful campaigns are the campaigns that go from awareness and move right into engagement as quick as possible. And by engagement, you mean consumption? Action, um, s some sort of uh, where you're making So sharing or whatever. Yeah, with a the, with the consumer. And I mean, how do, how do brands, I mean, how do you sort of, how do you set you up for success, right? Because that's, because managing expectations is a hard, is a challenge for an agency, right? I mean, w you know, defining engagement is sort of go back, you know, go back to the native thing. Like what everybody defines native differently, yeah, yeah. What, and engagement is different. Whether you're the publisher, or you're the media buyer, or you're yeah. the creative, how do you level set expectations? What's that conversation like? For me, engagement is any interaction. Um, we call them meaningful connections, but at Havas, but that takes place. So it's it's not just a one way communication. So it's anything somebody does, whether it's a tweet, they go online, they do a search. Um, there's some trigger mechanism that in a response to, to a campaign. Um, you know, and I think as a marketer, as a publisher, you can't put media out there anymore with, unless you enable people to respond. I mean, you walk down the street, digital billboards, everything is becoming touchable, interactive, that's where we're moving and the onus is on our side to make sure that if somebody wants to engage, they can engage wherever they are. You mentioned uh, a couple of, um, um, previously, one of the case studies you mentioned was Columbia, I believe. Yes. Yeah? yeah. And uh, some, other, some of the other campaigns we were talking about, I think were LATAM based as well. You know, Latin America is sort of growing overall at a 2x rate of the US. Um, as far as broadband penetration goes, but also they've just kind of skipped the browser. Yes, yes, definitely. What is that, I mean, 
what does that lens look like? Because assuming that the eventuality is that over time, the browser construct is going to become maybe less meaningful for us as we all sort of have that first screen which becomes mobile. How does that, how do you approach and attack a brief for a client that is really sort of 100% in a mobile first market versus North America? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really fascinating. All the stats, if you look, you know, more mobile devices than TVs, more mobile devices than, somebody told me like toothbrushes once, I think for one country in South America, but I'm not, I mean, it's really, all of the, you know, you, but you're bypassing your traditional <coughs> strategy where you would start off, I guess, with mass media. That being said, mobile devices as well as um, out of home. But there was a case at Con this year that won, and I don't remember the name, because they developed, um, maybe on the panel somebody knows, but it was, I believe it was in India, and they developed a mobile as a medium channel um, that created so much content through the mobile device that you could get advertisers to support it because that was the primary channel. And the same thing with Columbia. What we did there in Columbia, it was for Claro, which is a telco provider, and we created, like I said, the, this series called Talion, um, which was a high-def, um, mobile-first, you know, uh, high-definition um, branded content. And not only did we distribute it, but we got advertisers like Air France, Pouge, and others to sort of support. So you're seeing these sort of interesting collaborative business models happen when you're developing mobile, you're reaching people on mobile, because it's a whole new channel and there's probably not enough publishers there to support it right now. That might be another area why you're getting all these new players coming in to sort of develop content for mobile. So. It's interesting because uh, I'm just curious, June made the comment, uh, uh, sorry June, Mitchell made the comment for June group that uh, that a lot of the sort of connection is occurring over Wi-Fi, right? Yeah. And so in markets when you don't necessarily have, the broadband penetration is different, and one of the reasons they're going right to mobile. Do you see, I mean, are you, you know, people made the comment that like, duration doesn't matter because people are willing to consume long form content on mobile in the US now in particular. Yeah. Is that the same globally? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that's the, the telco's biggest nightmare right now across all countries is that, um, you know, over the top, like the intersect, you know, through Wi-Fi, new services, um, definitely, I, I agree with that. I think the, the comment about video <laughs> length and duration is quite interesting, how long you'll watch on your phone. If you're sitting in the subway and you've got like 20 minutes, why not, you know? Whereas you're online and you could be distracted, it's the opposite of what we once expected. Right, it's, we thought it was just yeah. a time pack yeah, killer, right? Yeah, it's, 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 I think, it, yeah, it's all about uh, situation, but yes, Wi-Fi, the prevalence of Wi-Fi, I mean, I see my patterns changing and I see, yes, in other countries, those patterns changing. I think the difference between the US and other markets is areas like programmatic, areas where data like issues, when you have a privacy discussion and you go to other markets, the US perspective on that is so very different um, than other markets where they're much more protective of data um, for various, you know, reasons, so. Yeah, so I mean, as, as you said, your sort of, your role is, is strategy, so it's kind of all encompassing, and but you happen to be in a me agency. How, is there, let's say, let's take the Claro campaign. Are there, are there two briefs? Is there a creative brief and then sort of a media plan? Like, or is it one brief now that is activation and storytelling? Like, how does that all come together from a actual, where do we start? Like, what's ground zero, right? Yeah, yeah. So, at working on the, on the global team, I usually get the briefs like, we are gonna launch in 10 countries. Um, the Clara was specific, a uh, unique project that just happened in Colombia. So I, I don't know exactly the original brief for that. I do know that the briefs we get now from our main, you know, big Fortune 500 companies are not, you know, maybe it's a media review, but what they're asking for is definitely not just media. They're not coming in asking for branded content. They're not coming in asking for mobile video. They're coming in and saying, can you solve like a business problem and whatever you think makes sense. Because you know, it's not that the clients don't know what they want, but there's confusion. There's, I, I, you know, people are looking for answers. So we go back and we work, you know, across content is really at the heart. Content and data of every solution. That's how we think about it. We don't think about, oh, we're going to recommend TV. Or we really try to think about how are we going to use owned assets, content and data. How are we going to look at their current partnerships um, and then recommend something that's going to drive you know, earned media and then sort of amplify that with paid media. And uh, to me, that is cool because 
once again, not to keep going back to history, but a long time ago when you would like build websites, you would always recommend to clients to do an audit of everything they have. If you're going to build a website, look at all your different properties and, and people kind of like blew that off and it's like, oh, let's just create a website and you know, figure it out after. And now I think people are really taking stock of what they've been doing, all the content they have, before they go out and want to spend money and figure out how can they because you know, take that content and drive the most bang for the buck and then add on to it. So to me, that's a really nice thing that, that's becoming like native advertising, trending in, in the uh, marketing world again. Yeah. It's interesting. I think one of the, and you, um, you know, I do a lot of these and like, so I've been doing a lot of programmatic and I was telling you when you stepped up that like, I always start programmatic with a vocabulary lesson, right? right. And I neglected to do that today because we were talking about a much more fun topic. Uh, but it's interesting that I think one of the challenges we have overall as an industry is that our lexicon is changing in every dimension, whether it's creative, it's media planning and activation or buying, like it, it, it's TV, it's digital, what it's you know agnostic, like whatever. Everyone's language of business is changing, yes. and we're all using different words. And I think, and we talked about the contrast between publishers and programmers and broadcasters versus media agencies and advertisers, and that in and of itself is a chasm that I sort of hadn't been aware of. So. Yeah. No, I mean, I always say that my role as a strategist is to take things and simplify them in ways, especially if you're going to like Ukraine and Russia and like places where they don't, you know, the, you need words that every country, every person can understand. It's not, and you don't want to simplify the idea down to being stupid, but it's really trying to be precise and clear. And I think as an industry overall, we have to be careful because we are complicating words, big data so much that it's, um, it's creating, you know, yeah. Yeah. but well, I, the words are there for a reason. So, but yes, I try as a strategist to, to it's one of my main roles to awesome. simplify. <laughs> Thanks, Rory. Yeah.